Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and today is day two of my seven days of mobile workflows. And we're going to continue the process. We started yesterday. Uh, we left off yesterday with Lightroom and Lightroom Mobile, getting our photos together that we're going to use throughout the week. And now we're going to edit one of those photos using and make a composite using Photoshop Mix. Now, Photoshop Mix is available uh, today as of the recording uh, on iPad and iPhone. You can use it on either platform. Um, you got a few extra bonus features on the iPad, though, and that's where we're going to do most of our work today. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I've got my iPad open here, and I'm just going to go ahead and launch Photoshop Mix. From here, I can go ahead and tell it that I want to create a new project on the left-hand side. And I get the choice of telling it where I want to get the photo from. So I can get it from uh, photos that are on the iPad, from the camera, from Creative Cloud, and more importantly, from Lightroom. So yesterday we put together a collection using Lightroom and Lightroom Mobile. And that collection is here, ready for me to continue working on the photos that I want to use. So uh, I think the one that I wanted was that close-up shot here. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, grab it. And uh, at this point, it's saying, hey, do you want to open this file? Do you want to pull it down from Lightroom Mobile into Photoshop Mix? And the answer is absolutely yes. So once I get the file here, I can do a few things with it. The first one that I want to do is I notice, you know, just this happens when you're shooting tall buildings, whether you're down on the ground or you're up high. Uh, unless you're shooting, you know, dead on, straight on, you can get this kind of look like they're leaning or out of perspective. Um, and we can fix that. Uh, let's go ahead and go to more edits. And at the bottom, we have upright. So this is using the same technology that's in Camera Raw and Lightroom in the Develop Module. But of course, I'm on a mobile device right now. I don't have access to the desktop version. We're pretending I'm not sitting right next to my desk. And let's go ahead and tap Upright. And that will upload this asset to Creative Cloud, process it using servers running in the cloud, and then bring the results for me to choose from back down to my iPad. So it gave me the original, which I can still see here, of course, without the correction. And it gave me choices one, two, and three to choose which correction I like best. So I can go ahead and choose one. And that one's okay. Number two, don't see much of a difference. Number three, probably, let's see, one and three would be my two choices. Yeah, they're pretty much the same. So I'm going to go with one or three. And then, of course, I can go ahead and tell it OK. And then, obviously, it would need some cropping because to fix the perspective or to make it more upright, it you know had to pull some of the photo in on the sides. So let's go ahead and use a crop tool. And we can just go ahead and crop uh, both corners. And that will give us our corrected photo. Great. Okay, so now at this point, what I'd love to do is I could, of course, go in and, and continue making adjustments with the looks. I can say, hey, is there a look of the photo I like better? Um, perhaps Vivid looks pretty cool. And I can go ahead and lock that one in. And then last but not least, um, you know, I know this was New York because I know that's where I was when I took it. But you really would be guessing if you've never been to New York or never seen this particular shot of the skyline as to what city this is. So I'd love to use Photoshop Mix to kind of give it a little bit more flavor from New York, just compositing another photo on top of it. Now, of course, this is Photoshop Mix uh, on an iPad. It's not the full functionality and fidelity of what you would have on your computer uh, with Photoshop CC, but it can get the process started. And if I want to continue it and refine it further, I can send it over to Photoshop, which is exactly what we're going to be doing. So let's go ahead and uh, first thing we'll do is we'll get started with, um, we'll do uh, right here at the top, you see the two layers, the one on the left is the one that we already have. And then I have a plus sign for the one on the right. And then I can go ahead and tell it uh, to grab a shot from the camera roll. So we'll just go ahead and grab that shot there. And now that I have this uh, other shot of New York, I can, of course, uh, pinch and zoom it to zoom it up or zoom it down. And actually, we're going to zoom it down and put it in place over here. Great. And then, of course, um, I would normally want to do some kind of cutout. So we have the cutout look here. I can go ahead and do a cutout uh, of the image. And I can go ahead and then just start 
it will kind of do a smart thing where it's kind of grabbing the colors based on the color. So I can just keep going around and uh, we got that nice sky. Now, of course, it's not doing it perfectly. And in this case, it's also inverting it, but that's okay. We want to fix one more thing here. There we go. And now what I, now I can see where it kind of grabbed too much. So the first thing I want to do is go ahead and tap invert. And then I can also tap subtract. So I can either add some of that back in, or in this case, I want to add, add some of that back in. There we go. So I can get kind of what I missed there earlier. And then I can play with bringing it back out. Now, of course, uh, this is where you know, you can only do so much on a mobile device, but we can at least get this process started. So now I'll go back to subtract and we can kind of subtract out some more of that blue. Hopefully it won't get too carried away this time. There we go. Uh, I got a little too much right there. A little too much right there, but that's okay. And again, just enough to get me going once I get back to my desk. Okay. And then we'll, um, we'll say that we're done. And I know you're saying, oh my God, that's, you know, you're not done. And you're right, I'm not done, but I'm done for now. So what I want to do at this point is I, I, I basically got the process started. I've, I've got kind of a concept. I could even show it to someone and say, hey, here's what I'm thinking of doing. And they, they say, okay, great. That looks good. Finish it. And of course, now that's what we want to do is finish it. So what I want to do is I want to send it over to Photoshop on my desk. So let's go ahead and say send. And we can say, um, save, send to Photoshop, save to the camera roll as is, or of course, post it to social media, which we're not quite ready to do. So let's go ahead and say, send to Photoshop. And what that will do is generate a PSD, complete with the layer that I added, and more importantly, the mask. And of course, the upright and everything else will be done. And I'm just, I'll just wait for it to now uh, upload to Creative Cloud sync it and then once it's on my desktop it will automatically open in photoshop so let's give that a second or two to happen and there it is now that we have this open in photoshop we can see you know where we kind of left off and what still needs to be done so first thing we'll do is we'll zoom in a little bit and of course uh you you're you're going to take way more time than i'm going to take here to make it absolutely perfect but you'll notice that it left us the mask and i'm just going to switch over to my brush tool and from there, using black, I can just go ahead and mask out the areas of blue that are kind of left over. And again, you'd get in tight, small brush, and really get in there and, and get it all and do a good job. I'm just kind of uh, just going real fast here to kind of get it done uh, for the sake of a tutorial. But take your time, go in and do it right. Okay, so same thing here, go back to black. And just get rid of the bulk of the blue here. Again, knowing that we would zoom in and do a much better job. And maybe a bigger brush in this case to do it faster. There we go. And then kind of once we got that all cut out around it, we can just go real fast and get this part out. And you might also turn off the background uh, just so you can check to make sure you've got it all because part of the building that's composited on is also blue. So it might be you might be missing pieces that you just don't see <coughs> because you got blue on top of blue. All right, now you're probably saying, well, wait a minute, Terry, that part that's cut out down there, that spike that you know it cut into, how are you gonna put that back? Well, again, we switched to white because that's not really erased, it's just masked out. So we can mask it, unmask it, and put it back. Switch to black, there we go. And same thing here, spike is cut out completely. Go back to white and restore it. So again, Photoshop Mix created that nice mask for me. So, I, it, you know, so it knows that you may wanna come in and do a a better detailed job in Photoshop. So by giving you a mask, it's giving you all of the image to play with, masking out the parts that you did in Photoshop Mix on your mobile device. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I think there's one more area down here. Yep, 
let's go get that and again you would take your time zoom in do a better job smaller brush use other selection methods to get rid of the blue as well but for the sake of down and dirty quick tutorial type masking this is what we're going to do okay now that we've done that and again like i said you would go in and do a better job but um, this may not matter as much because of what I'm going to do to it. So now that I've got that in place, the next thing I'm going to do is apply a blending mode. Now I could try either a blending mode or just opacity, but I want to try soft light first. Oh, a little too, <laughs> a little too soft there. Let's go uh, hard light. Hard light looks better. And of course we can still lower the opacity and bring that down. So you can see it doesn't really require it to be perfect in this case because of what I'm doing to it anyway. If I don't like the blending mode, I can turn the blending mode off, turn back to normal, and just continue to lower the opacity. Now what that will do is give it that kind of New York feel, even though you may not be able to guess from the buildings whether or not that's New York. Okay, the next thing I want to do is I want to bring in one more layer. Now in, light, or in Photoshop Mix, I was able to add another layer, and now you can merge layers in Mix, so I could keep adding another layer. But there's one more layer that I want to bring in, and it's actually over here already in my library. So I'm just going to bring in this clock. I'll just drag it in. And it's pretty huge. So let's go ahead and uh, Command T or Control T on Windows. Zoom out. And we're going to go ahead and scale it. Let's scale it down. And scale it a little bit more that way. There we go. The nice Roman numeral old style clock to kind of give it some time reference there the time of day or time of seminar that we're going to be doing there in New York. And there you have it. We can, of course, lower the opacity of the clock a little bit more as well. And there's our composited image. So started in Photoshop Mix, actually bringing an image in from Lightroom from yesterday, then going to Photoshop Mix, uh, adjusting the uh, upright for the buildings, add a little bit more um, vibrance to it using the looks there, and then uh, adding another layer in Mix to kind of get the composite started maybe as a, as a preview to show a client while you're right there with the iPad. And then of course, finishing it, making it look better here in Photoshop by finishing the masking job with more professional tools, more, pre more precision. And of course, then adding yet another layer that was already in my uh, Adobe Creative Cloud library. So I can use that layer in, or that clock in any application that supports libraries just by dragging it in or pulling it in. So now that we're done, one more thing, we're, we're going to want to use this later on in the work on, or in the workflow this week. So what I want to do is save this composited PSD uh, as a PSD. Oh, so let's do that. Let's as a Photoshop document. And we're going to save this as New York Skyline. And we're going to save it. We're going to save it to the Creative Cloud Files folder. Now, of course, you can save this anywhere you want. You don't have to save it to Creative Cloud. But if I put it in my Creative Cloud Files folder, in my demo folder, in my New York folder, then number one, I'll know where it is. Number two, um, by saving it to Creative Cloud, it will then be accessible in the rest of the apps that I'm going to be using this week as part of the mobile workflow. So, taking advantage of starting the process in Lightroom, getting this one photo ready in Mix. And of course, Photoshop CC on the desktop and then continuing it tomorrow with other apps. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you tomorrow for the continuation day three of mobile workflows for creatives. Take care. Thanks.